children raised among hens, goats, monkeys, and wolves, far from any human contact, reduced to the most complete bestiality. Today we plunge together into the heart of several fascinating and horrible stories of children raised by animals. Here is the unfortunate and incomprehensible case of an Indo-Fijian who spent his entire childhood in a chicken coop. This story is tragic and implausible and shows how much the human being is shaped by his environment and his surroundings. His name is Sujit Kumar. When he was two years old, he found himself without a parent. His mother had killed herself and his father had been murdered. We don't know how he ended up trapped in a hen house, but until the age of eight, this poor boy only ever saw hens, so when they dragged him out of this hellish place, he had exactly what they were like. Indeed, he emitted the same sounds, made the same movements, had the same physiognomy as the hens, he pecked rather than eat. Moreover, he was covered with wounds and scars. This case did not fail to attract the attention of neuropsychiatrists, who tried to reintroduce this wild man to social life. The results, after so much combined effort, are encouraging. Indeed, Sujit Kumar is no longer nervous or aggressive, and although he is still far from practicing the human language, he seems to understand certain words. In any case, the specialists are under no illusions, because Sujit has lived with hens in a period of growth where the brain is malleable, and where the transformations that take place are hardly reversible. John Sabunya lived a sad and original adventure. He was barely three years old when his father took his mother's life. Fearing that he would be the next victim, he fled into a Ugandan jungle in extreme terror. Later it was learned that the father had hanged himself. John's new life in the forest was just beginning. Much later, he recounted that at the very beginning, several monkeys had come to show him kindness, offering him nuts, roots, and sweet potatoes. Within two weeks, a friendship was born between the little boy and the monkey family who took on the task of raising him as a full-fledged member of the species. Indeed, over time, John had learned to climb trees, to seek his food, to integrate fully among his new brothers, in the middle of a very little frequented forest. But one day, a woman had ventured into the heart of this forest in search of firewood and discovered the strange life of this boy among the monkeys. She picked him up and took him to see a doctor make sure the boy was healthy. Specialists who have endeavored to bring him back to human morals have found that he has a typical ape-like behavior, for example, he avoids crossing people's eyes and tries to grab objects by the feet. Finally, it took more than 10 years of effort to restore John's humanity. Do you like this video? Then don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell, so you won't miss anything in our next publications. Let's keep going. Do you know the curious story of the two Indians Amala and Kamala? These two children were raised by a she-wolf for several years before being spotted by a local reverend who took them in 1920, using a clever and careful ploy. After that, the two girls were taken to an orphanage, in a state of very pronounced animality. Amala and Kamala were described as true cub scouts, they crawled on all fours, devoured raw meat, squatted down to drink the liquids they lapped, and at night, they howled and knew how to find their way around without difficulty. In addition, they had become agile and fast, and their hearing had developed beyond measure. Unfortunately, Amala, the youngest of the girls died soon after. On the other hand, Kamala, pampered, caressed, well-fed, was making admirable progress in her rehabilitation, and she had become famous. However, her health declined and she died around 1928. Here is the fascinating story of a boy who, from the age of seven, had only been a gazelle, feeding on grasses and bush leaves, in the desert regions of eastern Mauritania. This story takes place in the 50s, and it was already very popular, so much so that one day the anthropologist Jean-Claude Auger, enthusiastic and curious, decided to go and meet the man they called, Gazelle Boy. After gaining the trust of the herd, the anthropologist finally sees this prodigious child with dirty and stringy hair, who looked like he was 10 years old. The anthropologist describes him. His eyes are bright, dark and almond-shaped, his expression is pleasing and open, his ankles are disproportionately thick and visibly powerful. On this last point, the reality goes even beyond his impression, for it turns out that this wild child had acquired a truly supernatural velocity. Indeed, during a chase experience using a jeep, the boy, to flee the threat, reached a speed of 50 to 55 kilometers per hour. This is all the more incredible since an Olympic sprinter only reaches 44 kilometers per hour. Finally, the anthropologist had repeatedly tried to capture him, but his attempts all failed. Bello is a Nigerian child with a disability who, at the age of six months, was abandoned by his parents precisely because of his deformity, which was characterized by a deformed forehead, a curved shoulder, and a prominent chest. 
Gathered, fed, and pampered by a family of chimpanzees for a year and a half, this child found in monkeys what his mother and father cowardly refused him. Naturally, he ended up behaving exactly like monkeys, before a group of hunters spotted him in 1996 and took him to a children's home. At that time, Bella walked on his hind legs with his arms dangling, and like monkeys, he would howl, squeak, and often scratch his head. In the facility where he was placed for treatment, he would break things, jump from bed to bed, shake a lot and scare the other children. Sadly, Bello died in 2005, without a parent coming to inquire about or claim him. They couldn't believe their eyes. It was a girl, thin and disheveled, visibly about 10 years old, who was wandering quietly with a family of monkeys. It took very little time for the police, informed, to come and take her out of this environment despite the resistance of the monkeys. This poor girl, according to specialists at the hospital where she was placed, had grown up among the monkeys since birth. She was very aggressive, and couldn't stand doctors getting close to her. When this happened, she would scream and be violent, and when she was served a meal, she would spread the food on the bed and eat without using her hands. This tragic story is obscure because the police don't know how this girl, whose name and origin are unknown, ended up in the Katarniagat forest. Indeed, reports of missing children do not offer any clarification. However, the re-education of this young girl has borne some fruit, as she has learned to smile and is beginning to understand certain elements of language. In Romania, a strange story is told of a child named Tryon, found by a shepherd in Transylvania, in a critical state, without clothing, and huddled in a cardboard box. Thanks to the broadcast of this news item on the television news, his mother was finally able to find her child, made associable because of all his years of wildlife, in the forests. Long before Tryon's disappearance, the mother, a victim of domestic violence, had fled her husband's home, completely losing contact with her son, who probably ran away from his wicked father for the same reasons. Caregivers realized that Tryon, after his solitary journey among the animals, was suffering from rickets and severe malnutrition. The child's fragility was such that it was assumed that he was being cared for by dogs and other wild animals, without which he could not have survived. In any case, the mother spared no effort to help him during the following years, and although there is still a long way to go, young Tryon's progress is very encouraging. In Peru, in 1990, a boy who had been living among goats in the mountains since he was four years old was found. He was feeding on berries, roots, and milk, just like his wild companions, and he was walking on all fours. Its feet and hands had hardened. Scientists at the University of Kansas have studied the 12-year-old boy closely and have stated that while he is unable to express himself in human language, he nonetheless communicates very well with goats. Let's now take a leap into the past, to the 18th century, where the story of Victor de Laveyron, whom you may know, takes place. This boy was about 10 years old when he was found by several hunters in the department of Aveyron. He had jerky movements, bushy hair, a hunched face, and was unable to articulate a word. In 1801 he was entrusted to the care of Dr. Jean Itard, and this one, seeing that the wild boy could only pronounce the sound, O, oh, named him Victor. But the misanthropy of this unfortunate boy is relative, indeed, although he is completely unable to express himself, he goes, for example, near the fire to warm himself, accepts to sleep on a bed, and to swallow cooked meats. However, despite the immense effort of the scientific community for several years, Victor could never learn to speak. It had not even been determined whether his mental disability was due to his wilderness life, or to a previous disability that would have caused his parents to abandon him. Eventually, he was discouraged by the scientists and was placed in the care of a lady who, in exchange for an annual pension, took care of him. But in 1828, Victor died and was unfortunately thrown into a mass grave. In the desert lands of Namibia, we find the most numerous populations of cheetahs, and for a long time, men have had to learn, somehow, to live with these remarkable felines. Protected by an ecological association, which takes to heart the mission of creating a healthy and peaceful ecosystem between animals and humans, cheetahs live there surrounded by respect and benevolence. Moreover, the president of the association, Marlies van Vuoren, sees similarities between cheetahs and dogs, by their affectionate and loyal side. In any case, this photo of Gregory Colbert, where we see a young girl posing next to a majestic cheetah, goes in this direction. This girl, originally from the native sand tribe, has an attachment for this animal which, in return, would not hesitate to protect her if necessary, and one can clearly feel the spirit of deep communion between the two. 
This photograph, taken on the bed of a dry riverbed, early in the morning, is aesthetic and reflects the mutual affection of the animal and the girl. On the other hand, there is much good to be said about the sand people to which this girl in traditional dress belongs. In addition to being generous and intelligent, the members of this Namibian tribe are the allies of scientists or more exactly archaeologists. Indeed, they possess a prodigious talent of trackers, know how to interpret the traces and the prints, and represent a real asset for the researchers. Voila! That's the end of this video. All of these stories, in addition to providing us with interesting scientific teachings, remind us how lucky we are to possess elementary and precious things as simple as knowing how to communicate and think. Now tell us in the comments which of these stories moved you the most, 